to the lecture session on uh, open channel subject. Uh, today's topic is that most economical sections. In the previous uh, modules, we verified about uh, the introduction to the open channel flows, types of flows, and how the velocity gets distributed and how it would be different from the velocity distribution in respect of pipe flows and the energy momentum correction factors alpha, beta, their derivations, and we worked out a few problems related to that. Then we started uniform flow uh, and what are the formula for uniform flow like Chesis formula derived, Manning's formula, Bayesian's formula and what are the various factors affecting the Manning's roughness coefficient. Today's class we will be uh, concentrating on, on the topic most economical sections. What is this section first of all? The Few hundreds of kilometers. So when the canal used to be laid, naturally there would be certain portion cutting will be there that has to be removed uh, for a particular shape of rectangular, triangular, semicircular, and so on, or trapezoidal. And for particular some portion, we need to fill it up also because we have to obtain a required slope, longitudinal slope, all along the length of the canal. So this will happen only when we have set certain portion cutting, certain portion filling. Both should be done. Ideally speaking, no any canal when it is to be built, uh, both must balance. This is what is called the balance depth of cutting, which you probably you would be studying uh, more about that in the uh, canals in uh, water resources engineering third year. But at the moment, all the time we try to see that when a when a canal is uh, to be laid, when a canal is to be constructed, we try to see that it is as efficient as possible. It is as economical as possible. Efficiency of the canal in respect of carrying huge quantity of water. That means the discharge should be maximum. So this most economical channel section also is something connected to the hydraulic efficiency of a channel section. So when a canal is laid, when a canal is laid, which is working the best, then we say that hydraulically efficient channel are most economical channel section. So in other words, to say most economical economy should be achieved to see that uh, the, uh, the investment on the canal should be minimum possible. When you are constructing or uh, when you are laying a canal, we, sh we should see that it should pass maximum discharge with minimum investment. The investment should be a minimum and the discharge should be maximum. Then such a canal is called the most economical canal or most economical channel section. So how to arrive at this most economical channel section? We may have different uh, shaped channel sections, but uh, we uh, limit our study to four major shapes of the channel sections like rectangular, trapezoidal, triangular and circular channel sections. Most economical rectangular, most economical trapezoidal, most economical triangular, and most economical circular sections and what are the conditions for which we try to verify. What is this most economical channel section? A section of a channel is said to be most economical when the cost of construction of the channel, channel is minimum. They have been indicating that it should be laid with the minimum investment. So the cost involved in the construction of the canal must be minimum. Then we say that it is most economical. But the cost of construction of the channel depends on excavation and the lining of the canals also. Probably I would like to uh, just introduce the term lining here because most of you must not have got exposed to this word lining of a canal. Whenever a canal is laid, what will happen? The water is drawn from the place of availability, say reservoir, to the place of utilization. Maybe in a, a particular uh, context of uh, irrigation canal, how the canal would be? The canal carries water from the reservoir directly to the agricultural field directly to the agricultural field or to the place where the water is required to be utilized. Water is required to be utilized. In this process, when the canal is carrying the water, what will happen? There will be two types of losses for this water. Two types of losses. What types of losses are these? When the water is flowing in the canal, it, it will have a direct contact with the channel bed as well as the channel sides of the canal, channel sides. As a result of which, the water will have a tendency 
to seep through or to flow through the connected open spaces pore spaces of the canal this is what is called seepage in the canal seepage in the canal i try to repeat once again when the water is flowing in a canal the canal and the water would be in contact with the bed and sides of the canal and through the open or pore spaces of this bed and sides of the canal the water will have a tendency to seep through this is what is called seepage of a canal where does it go the water flows or moves away from the canal moves away from the canal and enters through the pore spaces finally reaches the ground water storage reservoir finally reaches the ground water storage reservoir this is what is called seepage this is a loss we consider this as a loss because when you are when you are releasing a quantity q at the at the inlet of the canal by the time it reaches the outlet of the canal first utilization point of the canal the water q will not be available some less quantity of water will be available so what is happening this what is that the difference is going for entering into the ground directly you must observe at many of the places even in a tank or in any of the roads a small pits or ponds when the water is um, stagnated there for a period of time the water will not be available there the water will not be available where is it going it is going or it is going into two places one is it is directly seeping or percolating into the ground through the pore spaces of the soil which is directly in contact with the uh, the channel bed and secondly the second loss is since the top water surface is exposed to the atmosphere there will be a change of temperature in the atmosphere which may be causing evaporation which may be causing evaporation so when the when the water is flowing in a canal it encounters two types of losses one is the evaporation loss and the other is the seepage loss this results in the reduction in the discharge of the canal from the starting point to the Uh, ending point of the canal from the starting point to the ending of point of the canal when the water is flowing some quantity of water may be directly uh, lost in the form of uh, uh, evaporation some quantity of water may be lost in the in the form of seepage in the form of seepage these two are losses as i have been indicating they are the losses because the canal is not intended for this what for the canal is intended the canal is intended to supply water to the place of utilization from the place of availability from the place of availability place of availability may be a reservoir so from the reservoir the water is being carried or conveyed to the place of utilization maybe irrigation channel so it should be utilized only for irrigating the land it should be utilized only for growing the plants but what is happening here in the process some quantity of water is seeping into the ground and some quantity of water is getting directly moving into the atmosphere in the form of evaporation that is why these two are considered as losses these two are considered as losses the original quantity required at the irrigation field directly cannot be supplied directly from the uh, reservoir it should be supplied little more little more because this more this more research is accounted for these losses all the time we try to see that these losses are minimum possible if the losses are not minimum what will happen huge quantity of water will be wasted here and finally the end user the farmer would not get the sufficient quantity of water for raising their crops for raising their crops so this becomes an unwanted phenomenon so to the extent possible we try to minimize these losses one of the process of minimizing the seepage loss is providing the lining that means a thin sheet of cementing material would be provided to the entire channel cross section to the entire channel cross section cementing material would be provided a small sheet thin sheet will be provided so when the thin sheet is provided naturally we will be breaking the contact of water directly to move into the ground surface you know very well cementing material will not that is what is called the lining material will not allow the much flow of water through the body of it through the body of it as a result of which the the seepage would be restricted so the seepage losses would be minimum however there are certain other measures also to minimize the evaporation losses that is a separate part but the term lying has come i thought i should explain to you a bit more about this would be studied in the subject water resources engineering one so the cost of construction of the channel depends on the excavation of the canal and what is the lining that is required to be provided by right? naturally compared to the cost of excavation the cost of lining will be very very high so 
it may not be that easy to line all the canals it becomes more and more uneconomical also so to the extent possible we try to see that the canal is laid in a hard rock region where the seepage losses are minimum then to keep the cost minimum the wetted perimeter should be minimum for a given dsr what do you mean by this wetted perimeter by definition wetted perimeter is the length of the channel boundary in contact with the flow in contact with flow that means the bed of the canal and the sides of the canal if this bed and sides of the canal the total length which is called the wetted perimeter <coughs> is minimum then the contact for the water with the surface of the bed and sides of the canal would be minimum if that is minimum naturally the losses would be minimum so to keep the cost minimum the wetted perimeter should be minimum for the given discharge so a channel section is considered to be the most economical when it can pass a maximum discharge for a given cross sectional area resistance coefficient and back slope so <coughs> for the given values of that means for the given conditions of the wetted area for the given condition of the channel roughness or resistance coefficient and for the given longitudinal slope of the channel if it is able to pass maximum discharge then we say that it is most economical maximum discharge then we say that it is most economical that means the discharge q must be maximum for the given values of the roughness coefficient n say manning's roughness coefficient and wetted area a and the longitudinal slope s yes. for the given values of that means for the given conditions of the channel for n a and s yes, if, if the value of this this such q is maximum then we say that such a channel is the most economical channel section so if you just look at the cutting the equation q is equal to a into v or a1 v1 is equal to a2 v2 that is such equation is q is equal to a into v it is evident that q is maximum when the velocity is maximum because wetted area cannot be changed the wetted area is the area of a given channel for a given flow condition so a cannot be changed so uh, from this equation if a is constant v will be maximum then q will be maximum then q will be maximum so q is equal to av from where for a given wetted area if the velocity v is maximum that is such q is maximum so q is maximum when v is maximum so what is v say let it be manning's formula or let it be chejee's formula v is equal to c into square root of rs or v is equal to 1 by n r power 2 thirds s power half in both the cases for v to be maximum what is the affecting parameter here for v to be maximum what is the affecting parameter if you see here the longitudinal slope and the resistance coefficient c or n are there we know for a given condition so the longitudinal slope and the resistance coefficient are for the given values but that means for a given channel condition so both are constant both are constant so v the velocity directly depends on the hydraulic radius r in both the equations for manning's equation or for chejee's equation v is equal to c into square root of rs v is equal to 1 by n r power 2 thirds s power half in both the cases the velocity v depends on the hydraulic radius r hydraulic radius r so for a given slope and resistance coefficient v is maximum when r is maximum because v is directly proportional to r in both the cases so if v is, is r, v is r to the power half and v is directly proportional to the power 2 by 3 so when r is maximum the velocity v becomes maximum if velocity v is maximum the discharge is maximum if the discharge is maximum we say that the channel section is the most economical channel section okay so come to this point r r must be maximum what is r by definition r is a hydraulic radius a by p r is equal to a by p as the wetted area a is once again constant r depends on p r is inversely proportional to p that means if p is minimum r becomes maximum so r is maximum when p is minimum this condition is used to determine the dimensions of the most economical channel sections if you just see a reverse mode for a given channel section let it be any shape of channel section if the value of the wetted perimeter p is minimum then hydraulic grade is r is maximum and if hydraulic grade is r is maximum the velocity v becomes maximum for maximum value of v the discharge becomes maximum if the discharge is maximum then we say that the channel section is most economical channel section is the point clear to you the condition that is used for different shaped channel sections is the wetted perimeter p should be minimum 
if the water perimeter p is minimum then the radial radius r is maximum elastic v becomes maximum the discharge q becomes high and hence the channel section is considered to be the most economical channel section we try to say about different type shaped channel sections and the conditions for the most economical section let us take most economical rectangular channel section so this is the arbitrary shape of a rectangular channel section bed width b depth of flow y top width t so for a rectangular section both bed width and top width are same b is equal to t and the depth of flow is y depth of flow is y so the wetted area how do you compute the wetted area for the rectangular channel section so simple that it is the cross sectional area of the flow section so bed width b and the top width is i mean the depth of flow is y so b into y or t into y b into y or t into y. b is equal to t in this case so b into y is the wetted area what is wetted perimeter by definition wetted perimeter is the length of the channel boundary in contact with the flow length of the channel boundary in contact with the flow y plus b plus y b plus 2y wetted perimeter is b plus 2y wetted area is b into y so from this equation take b b is equal to a by y b is equal to a by y so substitute here for b b is equal to a by y substitute for the bed width b in this equation then you will be getting wetted perimeter p is equal to a by y plus 2y a by y plus 2y a wetted area constant for a given channel section constant for a given channel section so p is equal to a by y plus 2y is the condition and we know condition for the most economical channel section is p must be minimum so assuming area to be constant equation 3 can be differentiated with respect to y and equate it to zero for obtaining the condition for minimum p dp by dy would be equal to zero when p is minimum when p is minimum dp by dy would dy would be equal to zero because either at a Uh, 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 highest point or at a trough point or at the peak point when you draw the tangent the tangent becomes horizontal the tangent is becoming horizontal means its derivative would be equal to zero so dp by dy differentiating with respect to y should be equal to zero then you will be having the minimum so dp by dy that means d by dy of ay y plus 2y must be equal to zero so you need to differentiate differential of a by y and differential of 2y differential of ay y will be a is constant so differential of 1 by y with respect to y minus 2 by y square minus 1 by y square into into differential of 2 y 2 into y 2 into 1 okay so here you have minus a by y square is equal to minus 2 or a is equal to 2 y square which gives you the wetted area a is equal to 2 into y square what is the wetted area b into y by for a rectangular channel section b into y for a rectangular channel section so b y is equal to 2 y square and Y Y gets cancelled. B is equal to two into Y. R Y the depth of flow B equal to half of the bed width. This is one condition for most economical rectangular channel section. What is the condition? The depth of flow in the channel must be equal to half of the bed width. Half of the bed width. Also, hydraulic radius. If you compute hydraulic radius, R is equal to A by B. A wetted area B into Y divided by wetted perimeter B plus two Y. Substitute now. Substitute wherever Y is there. B by two. Error y is there b by two, so b into b by two. Error by b plus two into y b by two. So you have b by four. So hydraulic radius is equal to b by four, or or r is equal to b by four. B is equal to two y. If you substitute here, two y by four or y by two, which which gives you hydraulic radius r must be equal to half of the depth of flow. So these are the two governing conditions for the most economical rectangular channel section. What are those two conditions? For a rectangular channel section to be most economical, the bed width must be equal to, I mean, the depth of flow must be equal to half of the bed width and the hydraulic radius must be equal to half of the depth of flow. Thus, it can be seen that a rectangular channel section will be most economical when either the depth of flow is equal to half of the bed width Or hydraulic radius R is equal to half of the depth of flow. Similarly, we take up the trapezoidal channel section also. So, if this is a arbitrary uh, trapezoidal channel section with with bed width B, please note that the bed width B and top width T are not equal. In this case, both are not equal. Bed width B or bottom width and T is the top width. And uh, say you have uh, the side slope for this trapezoidal channel section as Z horizontal to one width. Why is the depth of flow z horizontal to one vertical? If z horizontal to one vertical is there, for every one vertical, z is horizontal. 
for my vertical yz is horizontal that means is horizontal portion the horizontal extension in the top width will be z by on one side another z by on the other side so what will be the total top width b plus z y plus z y or b plus 2 z y is the total top width for a trapezoidal channel section so for a trapezoidal channel section bed width is b depth of flow is y and the size slope is z horizontal to one vertical what is the vetted area a vetted area a is the cross sectional area of the flow section so you have the rectangular portion plus triangular portion on either side triangular portion on either side with a base of z y and a height of y with a base of z y and a height of y and what is the rectangular portion area bed width b depth of flow y so b into y the rectangular portion cross sectional area <coughs> b into y the rectangular portion cross sectional area plus half of z y into y is the triangular portion like that you have on either side so multiply with 2 half b h half base into height into 2 because you have the triangular portion on both the sides so the vector area a will be equal to b into y plus half of y into z y into 2 so 2 to get cancelled you have z y square b y plus z y square or b plus z y into y is the vector area a vector area a is equal to b plus z y into y b plus z y into y okay so this is the rectangular section but with top width and side slope z horizontal to one vertical vector area has been completed vector area has been completed so this is a rectangular I mean trapezoidal channel section and you have the bed width b you have the bed width b and z horizontal to one vertical so this portion will be z y this portion is another z y the total top width would be equal to z y plus b plus z y or b plus 2 z y b plus 2 z y and y is the depth of flow why is the depth of flow just ignore about this angle theta at this moment this arc also just ignore at this moment okay then let us see how it goes what is the condition for the most economical trapezoidal channel section vector area has been computed as b plus z y into y how do you compute the vector perimeter vector perimeter is the length of the channel boundary in contact with the flow length of the channel boundary in contact with flow so the bed width b plus the sides this side and the side this side both all all three together must be added so for this triangular portion this vertical portion is y the horizontal portion is z y then this will be square root of z square y square plus y square or uh, y into root 1, one plus z square this side also y into root 1 plus z square so b plus 2 into 2 times y into root 1 plus z square will be the total length of the channel boundary in contact with the flow so the vector perimeter p would be equal to b plus 2y root 1 plus z square how do you get this because you have the diagonal in this triangle you have z y base and y is the uh, height so the diagonal will be square root of z square y square plus y square so this will be square root of z square y square plus y square or it is y into square root of 1 plus z square this is there for one side y into root 1 plus z square on one side similarly this side also y into root 1 plus z square so the bed width b plus twice y into root 1 plus z square gives you the total vector perimeter p is equal to b plus 2 into y into square root of 1 plus z square now you have computed the vector area and vector perimeter for the trapezoidal channel section. Vetted area you have computed it as b plus z y into y. Vetted perimeter b plus 2y root 1 plus z square. There are two things that you have computed. So from this, from the equation 1, at vetted area a is equal to b plus z y into y, compute the value of b, get the value of b from this equation. b is equal to a by y minus z y. a by y minus z y. Substitute that in the vetted perimeter. Substitute that in the vetted perimeter equation. P is equal to B plus 2y root 1 plus z square. What is B? A by y minus z y. Substituting that A by y minus z y plus 2y root 1 plus z square. So this is the vetted perimeter P. So what is the condition for the most economical channel section? The vetted perimeter dp by dy must be equal to 0. For P to be minimum, dp by dy must be equal to 0 for the given values of A, z being constant. So differential of differential of P. What is P here? A by y minus z y plus 2y root 1 plus z square must be differentiated with respect to y with respect to y so when you are differentiating a by y so minus a by y square minus a by y square second term is minus z y that is constant so differential of y with respect to y is 1 so z into 1 minus z into 1 then 
2y root 1 plus z square. 2 root 1 plus z square is constant into differential of y with respect to y is 1. So 2y, 2 root 1 plus z square into differential of y with respect to y is 1 is equal to 0. Now you have got dp by dy equated to 0 leading to a condition minus a by y square minus z plus 2 root 1 plus z square is equal to 0. Just I stop here at the moment. You please go through this equation again. What you got now? dp by dy is equal to differential of p with respect to y. Differential of p with respect to y. So in the every equation, what you got? p is equal to a by y. So differential minus a by y square. Minus a by y square. Minus z y. So minus z into 1. Plus 2 y root 1 plus z square. So plus 2 into root 1 plus z square into differential of y is 1 is equal to 0. Or minus a by y square. Minus z plus 2 root 1 plus z square is equal to 0. Or a by y square plus z is equal to this part. Take this to the other side. A by y square plus z is equal to 2 root 1 plus z square. Substituting the value of a. a is what is a b plus z y into y for trapezoidal general section. So b plus z y into y divided by y square plus z is equal to 2 root 1 plus z square. If you can cancel some other terms, you may uh, uh, cancel this so that you would be getting b y you b y plus 2 z y square z y square z y square so 2 z y square divided by y square is equal to 2 root 1 plus z square or or cancelling for y both the numerator and denominator b plus 2 z y is by 2 is equal to y root 1 plus z square what is b plus 2 z y b plus 2 z y is the top width so half of top width would be equal to y root 1 plus z square is the required condition for a trapezoidal section to be most economical. b plus 2 z y by 2 is equal to y root 1 plus z square. Half of the top width is equal to y root 1 plus z square. This is the required condition for trapezoidal section. Correspondingly, the hydraulic radius r can be completed. Hydraulic radius r can be expressed as r is equal to by definition weighted area by weighted perimeter a by p a by p what is weighted area b plus z y into y divided by the weighted perimeter b plus 2 y root 1 plus z square b plus 2 y root 1 plus z square and you have the condition half of the top width so b plus 2 z y by 2 is equal to y root 1 plus z square or b plus 2 z y is equal to 2 y root 1 plus z square 2 y root 1 plus z square. So for 2y root 1 plus z square, you may substitute b plus 2z y or substitute for b from this also in the above equation. So if you are substituting for b in the above equation, sorry, if you are substituting for b, b will be equal to 2y root 1 plus z square minus 2z y. Substitute here. Substitute here for b as 2y root 1 plus z square minus 2z y. Similarly, at the denominator also, 2y root 1 plus z square minus 2z y. So substituting that, uh, then you will be getting a simplified value by cancelling both the numerator and denominator, just uh, you can see here, 2 into y square root 1 plus z square minus z y square and 4 into y square root of 1, 1 plus z square minus 2 z y. So from both, you may take y y common from the numerator, 2 common from the denominator, you will be getting the same terms both in numerator and denominator, it gets cancelled and hence the hydraulic radius is equal to y divided by 2. Hydraulic radius r is equal to y by 2 is the condition for the most economical trapezoidal channel section as well as for rectangular channel section also. Just now we have seen for a rectangular channel section also hydraulic radius is half of depth of flow. For trapezoidal channel section is also uh, it is half of the depth of flow. So we are now taking up two things. Rectangular trapezoidal channel section and um, tra most economical rectangular channel section, most economical trapezoidal channel section. Both the cases we have seen, and the conditions also have been taken up. Now, what is uh, uh, this most economical trapezoidal channel section? It can be shown to be equal to half hexagon. How it would be? Let us see in this figure now. A most economical trapezoidal channel section can be shown to be half the hexagon. Okay, so uh, this is the top width for a trapezoidal channel section. Let O be the center of this top width. If O is the center of the top width, this portion OC will be half of the top width. What is the total top width for a trapezoidal channel section? B plus 2 ZY. So this becomes B plus 2 ZY by 2 which is also just now we have proved 
to be equal to y root one plus z square. That is of course one condition. Okay. Now let the included angle be theta at this corner. Let the included angle be theta. From O, from O, draw a line normal to this, so that you have a triangle OCF. You have a triangle OCF. Obviously, OB OCF becomes a right angle triangle with angle at this point is 90 degrees. With angle at this point is 90 degrees. What you have done now is you have taken a trapezoidal channel section. You have drawn the top width. Let O be the center of the top width. From the center, from the center, you have drawn a normal line to this side BC. So OF is normal and hence OCF becomes a right angle triangle and the included angle at point C is theta. Included angle at point C is theta. Okay. So the total side is BC. You can see here the total side is BC. Similarly, B is the horizontal projection of this inclined line BC, which is equal to ZY because we know the slope Z horizontal to one vertical. So BE is ZY. What is CE? Can anybody see? What is CE in this figure? CE is the depth of flow Y. It is the depth of flow Y. From the free surface to the bottommost point of the channel is the depth of flow Y. So CE is Y, PE is ZY, and the included angle is theta, O is the center. Let us see. It can be shown that for trapezoidal channel, the most economical section is half hexagon. To prove that, let theta be the angle made by the sloping side with the horizontal. Okay, in the figure, let theta be the angle at point C. Let O be the center of the top width. And OF is perpendicular to the slope inside BC. So the triangle OCF is becoming a right angle triangle. Angle OCF, this angle, angle OCF is equal to theta, is equal to theta. Now we take sine theta. What is sine theta now? Sine theta is equal to OF by OC. OF by OC is sine theta. Or OF is equal to OC into sine theta. OF is equal to OC into sine theta. OC into sine theta. Now, take from the angle, from the triangle BCE, from the triangle BCE, see, see here. What is this triangle? B, C, E. This is the triangle. Take once again tan theta. Uh, take uh, not tan theta. See, let me see. Sin theta. Take once again sin theta. Sin theta is equal to C, E, which is the depth of flow Y divided by B, C. C by B, C. So, depth of flow Y by square root of Y square plus Z square Y square. Or Y root 1 plus Z square. Both be the same. So, Y by y root 1 plus z square or 1 by square root of 1 plus z square. Sin theta is equal to 1 by root 1 plus z square. Now you substitute here. OF is equal to OC sin theta. OF is equal to OC sin theta or OC into 1 by root 1 plus z square. And what is OC now? OC half of the top width. That is B plus 2z y by 2 which we have found from the condition of the most economical section by differentiating with respect to y and equating it to zero the weighted perimeter we have got half of the top width would be equal to y root 1 plus z square half of the top width is y root 1 plus z square so substitute here oc is y root 1 plus z square into 1 by root 1 plus z square now root 1 plus z square root 1 plus z square gets cancelled OF, of would be equal to y what is OF in the figure? Let us go back. What is OF? OF, which is equal to the depth of flow Y here. Which is equal to the depth of flow Y here. Also, OB also is equal to the depth of flow Y. Once again, this side, if you take once again the depth of flow, which, which indicates that you can insert a circle with radius R is equal to Y. Thus, a circle with center O and radius equal to the depth of flow Y will be tangential to the three sides of the most economical section and hence the most economical trapezoidal channel section becomes half of the hexagon. Okay, we have completed 
two major derivations. Derivation conditions for most economical rectangular channel section, condition for the most economical trapezoidal channel section. In the process, we have proved that most economical trapezoidal channel section also would be half of the hexagon. Now, most economical triangular sections. So, uh, an arbitrary shape of the triangular section arbitrary shape of the triangular section with uh, top width t. What is the bed width here? Zero. Because it's a triangular section, there is no bed width. Let the included angle be theta. Let the included angle be theta. Assume that you have the same size rules on both the sides, zeta has to one vertical, zeta has to one vertical on this side also. Why is the depth of the flow? So the top width will be z by plus z by 2z by. Also, if you take uh, the included angle theta, tan theta will be equal to t by 2y. And hence, uh, you, you have the top width t will be equal to 2y tan theta. 2y tan theta because t is the top width. So if you have one, one side of the triangle, if you take it is t by 2, it is t by 2. So tan theta will be equal to t by 2 divided by y. t by 2 divided by y. And hence, t is equal to 2y tan theta. What is vetted area? It is the cross sectional area of the flow section. So half of half of 2zy into y. 2zy into the depth of flow, half base into height. So zy square is the vetted area. How do you get the vetted perimeter? Vetted perimeter will be the length of the boundary in contact with the flow. This, this side and this side together will be the vetted perimeter. So square root of square root of z square y square plus y square. So it becomes y into square root of 1 plus z square. And both the sides so twice of that. So 2 into y into root 1 plus z square is the vetted perimeter. For the best hydraulic section, dp by dy must be equal to 0. So vetted area, half of vetted area A would be equal to half of 2y tan theta into y because the top width we have seen 2y tan theta, 2y tan theta into y. So it becomes y square tan theta. Vetted area is y square tan theta. Or y square is equal to a cot theta. Or y is equal to square root of a cot theta, wetted perimeter p will be 2 y secant theta. Substituting that, wetted perimeter p will be equal to 2 into square root of a cot theta into secant theta. So 2 into square root of a into cot theta, cos theta by sin theta, cos theta by sin theta, into secant theta is 1 by cos theta. For the sake, uh, sake of convenience, you are taking square root of 1 by cos square theta, both mean the same. Now you have got 2 into square root of square root of this cos theta cos theta gets cancelled sin theta cos theta in the denominator or uh, sin 2 theta by 2 so 2 into square root of a by sin 2 theta by 2 will be the vetted perimeter or uh, 2 into square root of a by sin 2 theta by 2 or uh, 2a by sin 2 theta or uh, 2 in 2a cosecant 2 theta for most efficient section dp by dy must theta must be equal to 0 in this case not y theta theta is changing you know here so dp by d theta is equal to 0 and it has d by d theta of 2 into square root of 2a cosecant 2 theta would be equal to 0. Perform the differential. 2 into square root of 2a is constant of the differential. Can be taken out. d by d theta of square root of cosecant 2 theta is equal to 0. And you have minus 2 cosecant 2 theta cot 2 theta is 0. Cosecant 2 theta into cot 2 theta must be equal to 0. Or either cosecant 2 theta must be equal to 0 or cot 2 theta must be equal to 0. We can't keep cosecant 2 theta being equal to 0, which will never happen because 1 by sin 2 theta, which becomes infinity. So only cot 2 theta must be equal to 0. If cot 2 theta equals 0, theta becomes 45 degrees. Hence, the vetted area will be equal to y square. Vetted perimeter will be 2y into secant 45 degrees are 2 root to y, 2 root to y. So hydraulic radius r will be equal to y by 2 root to t. In other words, to say, most efficient trapezoidal channel section would be having an included angle of 2 theta being equal to 90 degrees. Theta is 40 by 2 theta being equal to 90 degrees. So if such a right angle triangular section is there, then it becomes most, most efficient triangular section. So we have seen now most uh, efficient rectangular channel section, most efficient trapezoidal channel section, most efficient triangular channel section. Circular channel section, we take up in the uh, next class, we just work out two problems quickly on this. We just take up uh, uh, two problems. Show that the discharge formula for a trapezoidal channel having the Manning's uh, coefficient n is equal to 0 
0 1 2 6 carrying maximum flow is given by this equation is given by this equation the discharge formula for a trapezoidal channel carrying maximum flow what do you mean by maximum flow the discharge is maximum if the discharge is maximum what is the channel called most economical channel so you can since it is given that it is carrying maximum flow in the problem you can make use of the conditions for the most economical trapezoidal channel section you can make use of the conditions for most economical trapezoidal channel section two conditions are given hydraulic radius r is equal to y by 2 and the other is half of top top width will be equal to y root 1 plus z square these are the two conditions which are given for the most economical trapezoidal channel section just now we have deduced so the discharge formula is given by this q is equal to 100 y to the power 8 by 3 e to square root of 1 plus z square minus z by 2 into s naught to the power half as i have been indicating let it be s naught or let it be yes no no worry as, as of now because we are dealing only with uniform flows it is only the longitudinal slope so s naught the longitudinal slope or bed slope of the channel and side slopes are given to be z horizontal to one vertical y is the depth of a flow in in meters and q is the discharge in meter cube per second then the discharge formula q is given to be 100 into y to the power 8 by 3 into square root of 1 plus z square minus z by 2 into s naught to the power half the condition that is given is it is carrying maximum flow it is a trapezoidal channel maximum flow so condition for most economical channel section can be applied the shape is trapezoidal then the Manning's coefficient is given to be 0 0.0126 0 0.0126 so for the maximum discharge in a trapezoidal channel, the conditions are half of top width would be equal to y root 1 plus z squared. Uh, top width is b plus 2z y by 2 is equal to y root 1 plus z squared. Or b plus 2z y will be equal to 2y root 1 plus z squared. That 2 from the denominator has been taken to the numerator on the other side. Okay. Or b is equal to 2y root 1 plus z squared minus 2z y minus 2z so from here 2y can be taken out common 2y into square root of 1 plus z square minus z b is equal to 2y into square root of 1 plus z square minus z since manning's roughness coefficient is given make use of manning's formula make use of manning's formula q is equal to 1 by n a r power 2 thirds s power half for the discharge using the Manning's formula. What is A here? A is the wetted area B plus Z Y into Y. B plus Z Y into Y. Also, B, we have found here 2 by root 1 plus Z square minus Z based on most economical trapezoidal channel section condition. Substitute that 2 by root 1, 2 by into 1 plus root Z square minus Z in place of B. In place of B. Substitute for B b is equal to or a is equal to in place of b 2 y root 1 plus z square minus 2 z y plus z y into y into y so you have 2 y square root 1 plus z square minus 2 y square z plus z y plus y square z so you got 2 y square z and plus y square z so minus y square z or a will be equal to 2 y square into 1 square root of 1 plus z square minus z by 2. This is the vetted area A in terms of y. In terms of y and z, you got 2 y square into square root of 1 plus z square minus z by 2. You have the Manning's equation, no? Q is equal to 1 by n a r power 2 thirds s power half. Substitute. For s, you need to substitute s naught. There is no change. s naught is given there. n, Manning's roughness coefficient, which is given in the problem 0 0.0126. Better area A, just now we have found 2y square in 2 square root of 1 plus z square minus z by 2. What is R here? R is hydraulic radius. Since the trapezoidal channel section is the most economical channel section in the problem, carrying maximum flow, what should be the value of R? Y by 2. R is equal to y by 2 is another condition. 
for the most economical cryptocurrency answer. So substitute for N, A, R, and S in this equation. R is equal to y by 2 for the most economical channel section. Q is equal to 1 by n, 1 by 0.0126 into a, 2y square, into square root of 1 plus z square, minus z by 2, into r to the power 2 thirds, y by 2 to the power 2 thirds. Why are you taking r is equal to y by 2? This is the condition for most economical trapezoidal channel section. Into s to the power half, s not to the power half in this case. So bring all the numericals to the one side. You have 1 by 2 to the power 2 by 3. So 2 by 2 to the power 2 by 3 into 0 0.0126 into y square here, y to the power 2 by 3 here. 2 plus 2 by 3, 8 by 3. y to the power 8 by 3 into square root of 1 plus z square minus z by 2. S not to the power. Obviously, all these numericals should work, should work out to be equal to 100 into y to the power 8 by 3 into square root of 1 plus z square minus z by 2 into s naught to the power half over. Next, an open channel is v-shaped. The shape of the channel is v-shaped. It's a triangular channel in other words. Each side being inclined 45 degrees to the vertical. If it carries a discharge of 0 0.04 meter cube per second, when the depth at the center is 22.5 centimeters, calculate the slope of the channel, assuming that the changes coefficient is 50. I repeat this problem again. I'll read out the problem again. It is a V-shaped channel. An open channel is a V-shaped channel. That means it's a triangular channel. Each side being inclined 45 degrees to the vertical. 45 degrees to the vertical. That means theta on both the sides is 45. Theta is equal to 92. Theta will be 90 degrees. So it becomes the most economical section. If it carries a discharge of 0 0.04 meter cube per second, when the depth at the center is 22.5 centimeters, you need to find the longitude slope of the channel and you have to make use of the changes coefficient c being equal to 50. So with respect to vertical, the angle included angle is 45 degrees this side, the 45 degrees this side. Included angle is 45 degrees and 45 degrees. Okay. So this is a, a best angular channel section or most economical channel section condition. Sometimes the most economical channel section is also called best triangular section. Best triangular section, okay, or hydraulically efficient section, all mean the same, all mean the same. So Q is equal to 0 0.04 meter cube per second given Y, the depth of flow 22.5 centimeters or 0.225 meters, wetted area A will be equal to half of base into height, half of base is half of the base into height, half of the base into height, okay, height is given 0 0.225, 0 0.225, so 2 into 0.225 into 0.225 into is equal to 0 0.0506 meters per weighted area we computed. Mean velocity will be discharged by area. The discharge divided by area. The discharge is given how much? 0 0.04 meter cube per second. So divided by the area. So you have got the velocity 0 0.79 meter per second. And weighted perimeter is 2 root 2 y. So 2 root 2 y is 0 0.225. So 0 0.6363 meters. Hydraulic radius R will be A by P, 0 0.0795 meters. Substituting in Chedi's formula, why am I using Chedi's formula? Chedi's coefficient is given in the problem. C is 50, so make use of that compatibly. So Q is equal to C into A into square root of R S. Substitute all the values, that is such Q, 0 0.04. Chedi's coefficient C, 50. Vector area, 0 0.0506 into square root of R, 0 0.0795, just now we have seen, into yes the longitude is slope required to be found. So S will be equal to 1 by 3, 1, 8. So in this, basically we try to look at what is a most economical section, what is the concept involved in a most economical section, also known as the best hydraulic section, also known as the most efficient section or hydraulically efficient section, all mean the same. We try to see all the time that the discharge must be maximum in a canal, in a canal or in a channel. So to achieve the maximum discharge, we have seen the condition Q is equal to area into velocity V. The velocity V has to be maximum. For V to be maximum, by making use of either Chedi's coefficient or Chedi's formula or Manning's formula, hydraulic radius R must be maximum. For R to be maximum, R is equal to A by P. So the vector perimeter must be minimum. This is the condition that we have used for deducing the conditions for most economical rectangular, trapezoidal, or triangular channel sections. So, for, for any shaped channel section, let it be rectangular, triangular, or triangular, 
we have seen that if the vacant perimeter p is minimum the discharge would be maximum so differentiating p with respect to y and equating it to zero we found we found the condition for the most economical uh, rectangular channel section has hydraulic radius is half of depth of flow and the bed width must be equal to twice the depth of flow second condition that we have uh, seen for trapezoid channel section is hydraulic radius is half of depth of flow and half of the top width would be equal to y root 1 plus z square b plus 2 z y by 2 is equal to y root 1 plus z square condition for most economical trapezoid channel section next similarly for the triangle channel section the depth of flow we have seen y 2 root 2 y is the condition and r would be equal to the y by 2 so based on these conditions we have taken up two problems problem number 1 on a trapezoid channel section which is carrying the maximum discharge second is the problem number 2 for a v shaped channel that means a triangle channel section which is carrying the maximum discharge and the slide slope has been computed for Uh, a triangular channel section just now we have seen for a triangular channel section the hydraulic radius must be equal to y by 2 root 2 y by 2 root 2 just now we have reduced the condition in the other two cases it is y by 2 have you noticed the difference y by 2 r is half of depth of flow for triangle for rectangular r is equal to half of depth of flow for trapezoidal but in this case r will be equal to half of y by root 2 Half of y by root two. This is the condition for most economical triangular section. So these two problems also I hope are clear to you. Please try to uh, take a piece of paper, note down the problem, and start working. Um,